them before placing it into the oven. And the girl said, Mom, why do you cut off the ends of the ham before baking it? And she said, hmm, I think it helps soak up the juices while it's baking. I'm not sure, though. That's just the way your grandma always did it. So I've just always cut them off. Why don't you call grandma and ask her? So the little girl phoned her grandma and asked, Grandma, Mom is making a ham, and she cuts off the ends before placing it in the oven. She said it's probably to help soak up the juices, but she wasn't really sure. She said you'd know because she learned how to cook from you. That's true, she said. I do cut off the ends of the ham before baking it, but I'm not sure why. <laughs> I learned how to cook from my mom. You should ask her. So the inquisitive little girl called her great-grandmother and asked, Great-grandma, Mom and Grandma both said that they learned how to cook a ham from watching you. Do you cut off the ends of the ham to help it soak up the juices? The great-grandmother chuckled. Oh no, sweetie, I just never had a pan big enough to hold the whole ham, so I always had to cut off the ends to make it fit. <laughs> what? What? We assume we know why things are happening, or sometimes we just blindly follow tradition because that's the way we've always done it. Therefore, that's how we're doing it. But the call for us on this day is to recognize, and this month, that that's how we never do, have never done it, is an opening for us to create something magnificent, for us to create a wonderful experience for ourselves and our lives by letting go of our attachments to the past. Tradition, right? Um, just the way that we have done it. It's all about moving from the mindset of comfort and tradition. That's how we've always done it into the mindset of trust and faith in the invisible presence of the infinite potentiality and unlimited possibility of the divine. That's how we've never done it. All things are made new. Are you with me? Yes. All right. So, learning something new. Did you know that when you learn something new, the neurons involved in the learning episode grow new projections and form new connections. Your brain may even produce new neurons. Yeah, physical exercise can uh, induce similar changes and also taking antidepressants. I'm not going to ask your a raise of hands for who's taking those. Don't worry. <laughs> It's also true that when you do something in a new way, thank you for laughing, Gina. <laughs> thank you. When you do something in a new way, right? So when you're doing something in a new way, you're actually creating these new neural pathways or God grooves, as I like to call them, right? And you're creating these new grooves that are supporting your well-being as the new connections are formed. They are strengthened or weakened over time, depending upon your practice. So if you keep doing it, that's how we've always done it. You're really reinforcing those grooves, and it's going to be harder to make the change. <laughs> um, but if you become open and trusting, the key word is really trusting the divine, you know, and having that faith and conviction, because as you do that, as you come from that place, as you live your life from that place of being, then you're open to possibility, and, and you know that everything is unfolding for your highest and greatest good always, because it couldn't be any other way, because spirit has birthed itself into existence as you. Why would it want to do something other than that, right? Other than the awesome being of you that you already are. Did that make sense? <laughs> yes. All right, so... Um, God grooves. All right, so they're either strengthened or weakened over time, depending upon practice. This is called neuroplasticity. Uh, and so this is a great reminder. Meditate, pray a while, study, serve, and tithe. Remember that song, <laughs> Christmas song? Um, and, and remembering that your consciousness is literally creating your experience for you. You're literally creating the uh, pathways in your brain to have a new connection, Right? Uh, by doing this meditation, by making these affirmations and, and stating them and faking it till you make it, you know? 
Because sometimes we say it and we're like, I don't know, it doesn't seem true. <laughs> or, you know, I'm saying I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, yet my bank account is negative 12 or whatever, right? So we keep stating it and, and feel the richness that we know we are, and then we begin to see the expanded good happening in our lives because that's the way it works. All right. So your mindset literally creates that's powerful, isn't it? You are powerful beings, my friends. Powerful. Powerful. Now, this week, I'm going to invite you to do things a little bit differently. And, and one of those things are, just so you can get an idea, if you always brush your teeth on the top first, how many of you know? Do you start on the top or the bottom when brushing your teeth? Who are the top brushers? Okay, who are the bottom brushers? <laughs> wow, some of you just don't brush at all. <laughs> okay, now how about um, your, your shoes, your socks and shoes, or if you wear sandals, right? How many of you always put your left sock and shoe on first? Oh no, that's... <laughs> You don't know. Now you're going to pay attention. So if you always put your left sock and shoe on first, try putting on your right sock and shoe first. If it's a sandal, forget about the sock. I don't want you going around with a sandal and a sock. That's going to be weird. <laughs> um, are you with me? Okay. And so if you are someone who can't remember, because it's something that we just do unconsciously, right? We just do it. We get up, we put our clothes on, or we, need, we know we need shoes to get out the door. And anybody ever put on two different types of shoes, by the way? Right? You are my people. You are my people. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, Okay. <clears throat> Maybe it's about you taking a different route to work, or if you're not working to the park, or to this community on Sundays, or to the grocery store, or the coffee shop, or the gas station. Just try taking a different route, just to kick it up a notch. And notice, pay attention to what happens in you. You are called in these moments of doing something new or even differently. What happens within you is you're called to be hyper-aware. And in that hyper-awareness, you begin to notice things that you maybe didn't notice before. And that's powerful, right? Because that's where you go, what else is possible? You know, maybe you've been praying a, about a particular thing, and the universe is trying to get your attention. You know, it's like, over here! <laughs> hey! Over here! And you're just like, do-do-do, I'm going this way. <laughs> You know, um, and so you begin to notice more. You have an expanded awareness, and you are seeing something is trying to happen, and it is magnificent, and it is good, and I'm paying attention just by this small act of changing it up, changing it up, right? So that's going to be one of your calls to action. And now moving into it's a brand new baby day. It's a brand new baby day. That has a great ring to it, doesn't it? Now, I like to begin every single day saying, this is a brand new baby day. It's never been lived before. It never gets to be lived again. It's a unique gift for me to create this day in life. Wow. At the beginning of a week, it's a brand new baby week. We've got this whole week that's never been lived before, and we'll never get to live it again. So let's pause for a moment. Just take a pause, take a deep breath, and take another deep breath, and on that exhale, give thanks now for this wonderful life that we have been given. This life that we have been given is happening right here, right now, not tomorrow, not yesterday. It's happening in this moment. This is all we have, and the rest of your life starts now. And now, and now, and now. <laughs> Do you even remember what happened five minutes ago? Oh, yes, the ham story, right? That's already history, though, yeah? What's happening right now? Something wonderful is happening as you, something magnificent is happening as you and in your life. So, 
Knowing that the rest of your life starts right now, how will you approach it? What mindsets will you embody? Divine sets. I like that. What divine sets will you embody? <clears throat> Today's a brand new baby day, and I am immersed in infinite potential and unlimited possibility. What else is possible? I mean, what if you just jumped out of bed and had that, right? So I'm pretty sure that most of you, like me, actually did jump out of bed this morning, yes? With joyful anticipation, eager to see your spiritual community, hear an inspiring, uplifting message, some soulful music, and connect with like-minded souls. And bonus, there's a little sandwich back there for you. <laughs> How awesome is that? Maybe you didn't know that, but that's your uh, extra credit, your surprise, right? <laughs> made by the lovely Susan Jones. Let's give her some love. <laughs> it's like a chicken Waldorf, uh, it's like a really good type of sandwich too. <laughs> oh man, I love it. What else is possible? So anyway, so we were excited to come here and to be here together, yes? yes. I know I was. But what about the rest of the week? What are your first thoughts when you wake up in the morning? <laughs> right? Coffee, 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 coffee. Yes, fair enough. Thank you. There you go. Now we're talking. Um, so this is a call again for us to maybe do it a little differently. Maybe a little differently. Or if we uh, have been positive in the way we've been waking up, then maybe we'll just give it a little booster, right? Boosters are good. And then you can go back to the old way next week. Sound good? So the question, <clears throat> okay, <laughs> the question is, are you typically grateful for this fresh start offered by the new day? Yes. Yeah. yeah, right? Yeah. Or are you like, oh man, it's Monday, I need like two more hours. I do that sometimes, especially if we go to bed late because we've got this small amount of time on Sunday where we get to just hang out, you know, after doing all the chores, and, and, uh, and my husband and I, we end up sitting there, and, and we're like, oh, it's 10, well, we better get ready for bed, and then, oh, now it's 11.45, we've been sitting in bed, like, reading. <laughs> it's time to go, time to go sleepy time, you know? Um, so when I do that, then I tend to feel a little less than positive on Monday morning or the next morning, whenever that is, because it happens often. Not that often, but sometimes, right? <laughs> so are you grateful for the fresh start offered by the new day, or do you find yourself weighed down with depressed, regretful replays of yesterday? Ooh, regretful, wow, regretful replays of yesterday. Does anybody do that, yeah. right? Yeah, sometimes it happens, though. Or do we have anxious previews of tomorrow? Like, oh, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that, I don't know how I'm going to fit it all in, oh, got this meeting, I got to get up at six instead of seven, right? But what might it feel like for you if you were to fully trust appreciate and engage in the new now that the beginning of each and every today offers? What would it be like for you? Knowing that infinite possibility is your divine birthright. Friends, we deserve to seize each new day as a new beginning. It's a brand new baby day. And that phrase I first heard from Mary Manon Morrissey years ago, and she is the prosperity plus um, instructor, among other things. She does a lot of great work and has written several books. Um, it's a brand new baby day. And knowing it's a brand new baby day, what do you think of when you think of a brand new baby? Fresh, new, unconditioned is what I think, like close to the divine, you know? Like so close. Hasn't been taught anything. Hasn't been told anything negative, you know? Right? <clears throat> we think of it as fresh and new. That's what our lives are like every morning. We've got a brand new baby day. Now we have a brand new baby week and a brand new baby month. And oh, 
so much good can happen, yes? Now, as a reminder, we are constantly evolving. Have you noticed? (laughs) We were created in the image and likeness of the divine, and we are constantly evolving inside, internally, and outside, externally. All you have to do is look in the mirror to see the proof of that, right? The external evidence. But we are also evolving spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. And you can't see it in that same exact way that you can see in the mirror. However, you do see your internal evolution as the external expression of your life. You know, are you living the dream or not? And if you're not living the dream, What's happening in you? How can you create that? Maybe you need to do some work to grow yourself spiritually, emotionally, or mentally, you know? Maybe you need this inspiration to take it to the next level. Meditate, pray a while, study, serve, and tithe. (laughs) It's catchy. It works. And so, living the dream. You're living the dream right now. I'm living the dream right now. This is it. It's not a dress rehearsal, you know? This is it. So what we are called to do is align with that perfect pattern of good, of love, of light, of wholeness that lives within us already. It's not something we have to go get. It's not something we have to buy. I get confused by that sometimes. If I just buy this book, right, this will have all the answers. If I just had those earrings... (laughs) That would complete it, you know, that that would be it. (laughs) Thank you again for getting me. (laughs) You know, we don't have to go out and buy this thing that we're already, uh, there's already this perfect pattern of good within us, this love and light and wholeness. It lives within us. We've just got to pay attention. And we're starting this week, we're starting this month in paying attention by switching things up a little bit, you know. We let go of whatever littleness we believed about ourselves yesterday and awaken to the bigness that life offers us today. Are you with me? Yeah. Let's do this. Now, you may have heard this before. There's only one life. That life is God. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. There's only one life. That life is God. That life is perfect. Try to do it all together. That life is my life now. Again, there's only one life. That life is God. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. Now stand up. Repeat after me. There's only one life. That life is God. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. Let's try it together. There's only one life. That life is God. That life is perfect. That life is my life now. Woo! You can be seated. Wow, when you guys stood up, You got louder. Did you notice that? Wow. Ooh, got the God bumps. Totally up my spine and into my hair and out here. (laughs) Again, thank you for getting me, BJ. Ooh, okay. This one life that we call spirit, source, whatever you call it, whatever name you give it, has chosen to experience itself as you. This presence came into form as you. It came into form to experience itself in the particular way as the individual expression that you are. Nobody can be you. Nobody can express spirit in the way that you do. How cool is that? How cool is that? It's time for us to stop standing in the way, okay? God's got some work to do through you. Something beyond your wildest imagination. Now, you may already have this divine idea, uh, you know, whatever spirit has dropped into your consciousness that you know you're going to be doing and being, um, but 
It's got something to do through you that's beyond your wildest imagination, beyond any reference point that you have. And it's waiting for you. It wants to be mighty and miraculous through you. Are you ready? Yes. Will you let it? Yes. What? Yes. All right. All of life's infinite possibilities are absolutely available to you as you decide what you'll think about yourself and your world in each and every brand new baby day. It's time to stretch into a bigger idea of ourselves with each new God morning and grand rising and our willingness to step into new territory knowing that we are supported by a universe that desires only our good. That's a gift that we can uh, give ourselves every morning. Remembering that, yes? yes? Well, we should just send out my sermon notes to you, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll do it. Now, I want to share about a story from <clears throat> a comic novel by Douglas Adams called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Anybody ever read that one? Yeah, a few of you, okay. So the Starship's space jumps are powered by something called an infinite improbability drive, yes? Now, this technology is not without side effects. Uh, once the drive is engaged, increasingly improbable events manifest in the space around the ship. So the protagonists are being pursued at one point by two nuclear missiles. And in a last-ditch effort to escape, the leading character fires up the infinite improbability drive to jump through space. Now, the unexpected side effect is that it turns the two missiles into a bowl of petunias and a sperm whale. <laughs> What? what does this have to do with this spiritual uh, service today? Well, friends, at the time, they are miles above the surface of an alien planet, also known as Earth. Now, their lives are going to consist in their entirety of the time it takes them to reach the ground. Wow. So their story comprises an interlude while the main characters get on with the rather more prosaic job of landing their spaceship. Without going in detail, you can find the details in the book, the whale waxes philosophical, optimistic and curious about the universe and its place in it, while the bull of petunias is dismissive and pessimistic. Oh, it's happening again, it says, Ultimately, though, they both smash to pieces at the same time and place with the same general effect on the rest of the universe. <laughs> now, you can draw your own conclusions from this, but the conclusion that I draw is that, it, honestly, whether we are pessimistic or optimistic, things are going to end the same way. And so you can either create something in your life by being optimistic or you can create its opposite in your life by being pessimistic. Some people love that, but no, I don't think you guys are up to that. You wouldn't be here listening to me, <laughs> you know? And so my mental, emotional, and physical well-being tend to do better when I am more like the whale, optimistic and curious. Yes, I can also stay conscious of all of the facts that are happening all around and still choose to be happy being me. And when I do that, I find myself happier, I'm easier to be around, I'm in good health because my body um, experiences the effects of all of my thoughts and the body of my affairs experiences the effects of what's in my consciousness, you know? And it is good when I am like that whale. And in that consciousness, I know that I can do and be anything. And in that consciousness, I come from the place of what else is possible? What else is possible? So another great lesson for me in that is this incarnation is very brief in the grand scheme of things, you know? What are you doing with it? What will you do with it going forward? What would you love? You know, what would you love to experience? 
This is your time. This is your day. What sparks joy in you, as Marie Kondo would say? (laughs) What sparks joy in you? What is it? All right, so to wrap it up, each new day is an invitation to expand into a fuller expression of our divine humanness. We wake up each morning to infinite possibility and all that unlimited overflowing good waits on our acceptance of it. Accept it. Accept it, agree with it, welcome it. We get to choose. We get to choose. So will you be like the sperm whale or the bull of petunias? Embrace the day. Embrace this brand new baby day. Stay curious and hopeful and be open to more fully experiencing and expressing the light and love that you came here to be. And remember just how much spirit enjoys being itself as you. Our conscious evolution is as unique divine humans is ongoing, isn't it? It's only limited by the degree of our individual agreement to participate in its unfolding. What's that, what's that mean, right? That means you come here on Sunday, you hear a lot of words, there's a lot of stuff being said, there's prayers, you know, and, and so, um, it's up to you to begin to believe it and accept it as truth, you know? If, and, and you can try it on, right? Like, a, like an outfit, you can try it on. And if like the happiness is too much for you, bah, just get rid of it. <laughs> like if the joy and the bliss and the beauty and the wholeness and the prosperity and abundance and connection and the universe smiling at you and loving you and continuously uh, sending its good and uh, magnificent joy over your way, if it's too much, Just let it go, right? You can put back on the old outfit later. But the call of action, the call for us, the invitation is for us to say yes. I am willing and available and ready to participate in the divine unfoldment of my life as it is today. Something wonderful is happening. I accept it. I accept it. (laughs) I express it. (laughs) I believe it. We'll talk about that later. (laughs) Yeah. And so the invitation is to say yes. God morning. It's a brand new baby day. Grand rising. This is the first day of the rest of my life. And it's happening now. And I rejoice in the victory of it. And now I'm going to invite the musicians to come up and prepare for the closing song while I go into our uh, specific calls to action. So, number one, pay attention to your first thought upon waking tomorrow morning. Is it sad and tired or enthused and curious? Consider an affirmation or an affirmative prayer to shift the energy. And then... Start each moment, each morning this week by greeting the day in a new way. For example, grand rising. It's a brand new baby day. This day has never been lived before. The rest of my life starts today. Yay! (laughs) Say it, shout it, sing it, whatever you want to do. Or try out God morning or hello sunshine. (laughs) Yeah. And keep using Grand Rising, of course. That's our annual theme, the theme for 2024. And now there's another assignment for you. Now I want you to take a moment and turn to the person next to you on your left, let's say, or someone close to you. All right? You're going to have an assignment. You are going to have an affirmation partner. What? Who doesn't have a partner? Oh, Mark in the back. You guys all have partners? We'll be partners, honey. Okay. Betty and Mark Bland, is that okay? Oh, you got one. Oh, Kim and Mark. Yeah, come on up here, Mark. 
Yeah. Front row Joe. <laughs> Woo! Let's give Mark some love. <laughs> All right. Now, here's what you're going to do. You're going to message each other every morning this week at an agreed upon time with an encouraging morning affirmation. You're going to come to your own agreement. You're going to come to your own, listen up, you're going to come to your own agreement on communication choice, like are you going to do it by voicemail, email, text message, Facebook Messenger, or some other medium, and you might stick with grand rising, it's a brand new baby day, the rest of your life starts today, or create your own, or switch it up every day and do something different, it's up to you. And then also, make sure that the person you're paired up with uh, gives you permission to do this because, of course, if somebody says, I just can't stand the thought of having one more incoming text, it makes me crazy, you know, um, then they can opt out of the assignment, right? That's fine. <laughs> you can opt out, of course. So <clears throat> you're going to need to come up with an alternative practice to institute instead, though. So exchange your uh, contact info, and then I'm going to be looking for feedback reports about how this went for you this week, all right? You can send me an email or a text or uh, whatever. I'm on Facebook. You could Facebook Messenger me, any and all of that. I want to hear it. Okay. All right, you guys can do, uh, for how are we going to get our Zoomers paired up? Zoomers, you're going to pair up too. You can do it in the chat, yeah. Pair up in the chat. All right. Let's take another deep breath together. Let's take a deep breath together. <sighs> Friends, let's take one more deep breath together so we're all connected again. Here we go. <sighs> do whatever it is you need to do to get comfortable in your body. Put your papers down, put them on the ground, put your purse down, maybe in the seat next to you. Allow yourself to be fully present and available in this moment now. Yeah, there we go. Here we are. And I invite you to turn your attention inward. I like to close my eyes and I invite you to do the same. Um, but if you choose to, you can keep your eyes open and gently rest your gaze a few feet in front of you. And oh, coming back to this place of pure love and joy. I remember that this is the space where I know with every fiber of my being that yes, there is only one life. That life is God. That life is perfect. And that life is my life now. I remember that spirit has birthed me into existence, not as some uh, single entity all alone in the world, but spirit has birthed me into existence as part of it. And it has birthed me into existence to experience a mighty and magnificent life of joy and beauty and all that I came here to be. And this is true for all of us, not just me. And since it has done that, this thing that I imagine spirit to be, this eternal and vast presence of love, the energy that is uh, the energy of all creation, the same divine intelligence that spirit is that birthed the planets into existence. It's mighty. It's massive. It's infinite like it, it doesn't end. I can't see the end. I don't know the end of it. That is here right now in me, expressing itself as me and through me. As I remember this, <laughs> anything that would hinder or block me from being 
the bright, brilliant light that I came here to be is dissolved. It's released back into that native nothingness from whence it came. And I am free to shine my light. And maybe, uh, maybe there's a little trepidation at first because it's new. But that's okay. Each one of us remembers that we are walking by faith. We are walking by conviction, not by sight. We are walking by our knowing of the divine and knowing that it birthed us into existence to experience a life we loved and it wouldn't let us down. So it's easy. Oh, this is so easy. It's so easy to put one foot in front of the other. It's so easy to be all that I came here to be. It's so easy to shift my attention and mindset onto the um, expressive, um, expanding realm of good that is already here. It's easy. I'm no longer seduced by the negative thoughts. I am free to turn it around, as Amy Steinberg sings. Free to turn it around. And in that turning around, I am so filled with joy. I am so filled with love. I am so filled with spirit that I remember anything is possible. When I stand in that place of that's how we've never done it. I have no reference point for the mighty and magnificent good that is trying to happen in my life, but I'm ready for it. I have no reference point for uh, the great and mighty magnificent work that Spirit has in store for me that it wants to do through me, but I'm ready for it. I'm available for it because I have said yes. So bring it on, Spirit. Life is good and all is well, and I give thanks for this day. I give thanks for this brand new baby day and all of the good in store. Ah, feeling the blessings of spirit, I remember in this moment that it is within me and it goes behind me and before me and beside me and above me and below me and all around me within me and that spirit is for me that the universe is for me that this life is for me there's nothing against me there's nothing standing in the way of my being this magnificent force of good that I came here to be I am free to be me Woo! it's good and so thank you spirit for all of this and so much more I know that uh, this prayer is already complete and it is returned manifested magnificently in each one of our lives because when the word goes out it is returned it's like a boomerang and it's already done and we rejoice and give thanks as I let it go and let it be and so it is, so it is. Woohoo! <laughs> yay